Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to launch a very noble exercise that will go a long way in streamlining the management of the Bungoma County Education Support Scheme. The scheme, as you are aware, is governed by Bungoma County Subsidiary Legislation of 2019. The purpose of the scheme is, as, as per the legislation, is one, provide scholarship, and two, provide bursaries to students from Bungoma County. The legislation provides an expenditure allocation ratio between scholarships and bursaries in part two, section seven A, B and C, which is as follows. And I want you to follow this clearly. A, bursary should not be less than 57% and not more than 87% of the total allocation. Scholarship should not be less than 10% and not more than 40% of the total allocation. The administrative expenses should not be more than 3% of the total allocation. From the legal reference, it is clear that the framework of the legislation purposes to have the bulk of beneficiaries from the scheme being on bursary and a lesser number on scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, the second very important part of the legislation is on the management of the scheme. The legislation provides for the establishment of two committees. One, at the county level called the County Education Support Scheme Committee, which is in part three, section 10. Two, at the ward level, the Ward Education Support Scheme Committee, which is in part four, section 12. The composition of the committees has, among others, respective chief officers, while the ward committees have five members, one being the ward administrator and the rest being strictly members of the community. Ladies and gentlemen, the legislation is clear on the qualification for either scholarship or bursary and the selection process of the beneficiary students. On qualification, apart from academic score, the beneficiary must, and I emphasize, be a needy case and, and vulnerable. The key ones to note here, ladies and gentlemen, are needy and vulnerable. It therefore goes without saying that a child from an able incoming family does not in capital letters and should not in capital letters be on the list of the beneficiaries whatsoever. On matters selection, the exercise must be handled by a lawfully constituted board committee that is impartial and acts within the law without favoritism, nepotism, or corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, shortly after I came into office, due to the lack of clarity on the information that surrounded the scholarship scheme, I set up a task force to audit the program so that I could get an independent, transparent report on how it was managed with a view of improving it. In November 2022, I received an interim report that pointed out massive glaring irregularities and system abuses, which I did share with the public in my press release then. However, we could not just sit and wait for the final report before acting on the matters that were raised in the interim report. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go through some of the findings below. Expenditure allocation utilization for 2021-2022. Below is a summary of the utilization of funds for the financial year 2021-2022. The budget, department budget was 400 million. Scholarship was allocated 366,750 which went to 65%. Bursary got 140 million, which went to 25%. Administrative cost was 16 million, 525, which was 3%. VTC capit capitation was 45 million, which was at 8%, giving us a total of 568,275,500. Ladies and gentlemen, from the aforementioned figures, the scholarship provision was pushed to 65% of the total amount allocated, which 25% over, which was 25% over the above 40% ceiling that is provided for in law and in regulation. This trend totally disenfranchised many poor students who could have benefited on bursaries. The extra 25% above budget amounted to 139,439,800. That amount if applied according to regulation and spent on bursaries at an average of 5,000 per child, would have supported 
27,800 student, 888 students instead of an extra 4,000 students that benefited on scholarship. This is this equitable distribution, not just the few, but the majority to benefit. This is why we are going to comply with the regulations and give more emphasis to bursaries. Ward Selection Committee and Vetting Exercise. The tenor of the ward committees, which are tasked with the responsibility of identifying beneficiaries, has expi had expired. B. The last minute rush ward committees of 2021-2022 were unlawfully constituted with several members of the executive chairing them, contrary to law. The vetting process of cohort 5 was, I would say, politically driven and the ward committees were driven by staff from the executive, contrary to the law. I will not mention them because some are here. <laughs> but they know what they did, which was contrary to the law. A number of CCs, a number of chief officers took over the work that was not theirs at the world level. Yeah. And that's why we found ourselves in this kind of mess. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, chief officers and CC members had no business engaging in illegalities by going down to the wards, doing home visits and taking over the vetting exercise of prospective beneficiaries. It is for this reason that I'm commissioning you as the new World Education Support Committee members to help clean up and carry out proper vetting of beneficiaries in strict adherence, in strict adherence to the law and regulations as provided. provided. In discharging this mandate, please remain impartial, objective, and conduct this exercise with the highest level of integrity, because anything short of that will not be taken lightly. We cannot afford to repeat the mistakes that have been brought to light by the task force police. I call upon members of the public to be vigilant on any officer entrusted with this responsibility who might be tempted to solicit bribes and any other unwarranted favors to bring such matters to our attention. Ladies and gentlemen, in reviewing the list of beneficiaries, the task force did a head count to ascertain the real beneficiaries of the scholarship. The findings indicated that A, the number of students on the submitted list from the Department of Education and Vocational Training did not tally with the number of beneficiaries in the school. The number of untrained students was very high in big schools that I mentioned to you last time. The Form 4 leavers who sat for KCA examination and exited are still on school lists and are receiving funding from the Department of Education and Vocational Training. C. There are repeated names of beneficiaries from the list submitted from the Department of Education and Vocational Training. D. There are 53 students benefiting from other sponsors, such as Equity Bank, Family Bank, Cooperative Bank, Bungoma High School Scholarship Program, and other education sponsors, and yet still receiving the scholarship funds from the county. 53 students at the rate of 35,000 amounts to 1.8 million, which would have benefited 371 needy and vulnerable students on bursary. There are students who were transferred from, from beneficiary schools and their details were not corrected in the system but they are still receiving funds from their initially captured schools. Hi, there are students on the list received from beneficiary schools and Department of Education and Vocational Training whose fees had already been paid by the parents and the guardians and the continue receiving scholarship. J, there were eight students who had dropped out one died, but the funds still continue to be remitted. I want to thank the water administrators for working with the task force members and teams from the department in the process of identifying and confirming the cases of students from the able families who are on the list. The exercise, thank you. The ex that exercise has so far yielded a total number of 1,403 undeserving cases that were benefiting from the scholarship at the expense of needy and vulnerable students. The 1,403 cases at the rate of 35 amounts to 49,105. That could have gone to 9,821 needy and vulnerable beneficiaries on person. The status of the parents for 1,403 students included chiefs and assistant chiefs. The annual total chiefs and assistant chiefs on the bursary for scholarship. Many county employees. The list is with the, my county CEC. We are not talking about stories. Those who want to confirm will go to check. The names are there. Many county employees, government officers, police officers, nurses, teachers, several school principals, 
and of course, unfortunately, some sitting members of county assembly. <laughs> Not these ones. <laughs> the list is there. But the list is there. It should go on record that the bulk of these undeserving cases came from cohort five, which were recruited in the middle of last year's general election. I want to thank those county employees who have privately stepped forward, apologized and for having enrolled their kids on the program and voluntarily withdrawn the application from further support. I would like to call on the few remaining ones to follow in the, the same footsteps immediately, failure of which we will take serious action for abuse of office. The trend that the program has taken has become unsustainable in budget allocation in the long run. In the last year of 2022, the number of students added to the roll was 7,000 without approved budget allocation by the county assembly to cater for the payment. Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers were ballooned in the financial year 2022-2023 without an approved budget. In 2018, the intake was 453. In 2019, the intake was 556. In 2022, the intake was 760. In 2021, the intake was 2,192. And suddenly, the intake in 2022 was pushed to 8,000. 870, for reasons that you can guess. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind us that according to Schedule 4 of the Constitution of, the, of Kenya 2010, the scholarship education support is a national government function and as a county government, we are playing a complementary role. Our core mandate as enshrined in the Constitution is focused on developing early child education, vocational training and home craft centers. Even as we roll out this rebating exercise, we call upon parents to explore other sources such as CDF and other non-governmental education support programs for their children such as KCB, Wings to Fly, Family Bank, and Cooperative Bank. I further wish to call upon the CDF, and I want to thank the members of Parliament who are here and others we have talked, and local support partners to make public their lists, and I want to agree I also captured in my speech, to make public their lists of beneficiaries so that our ward selection committees take note and do not reward those beneficiaries already catered for. This will go a long way in ensuring wide equitable distribution of the funds so as to reach as many beneficiaries as possible and avoid double funding to a beneficiary. As we start the rating exercise for the continuing students, which will be followed by rating exercise for the Form 1 admissions, I wish to bring to your attention that in the supplementary budget we have set aside funds as follows. A. The total budgetary allocation is 524 million for both scholarship and bursaries. B. Out of the 524 million, Kenya shillings 200 million has been paid out, leaving us a balance of 144 million to be dispersed this time. C. An additional 4 million has been set aside in every ward to take care of bursaries amounting to a total of 180 million for the 45 wards. With this amount and with an average allocation of, say, 5,000 Kenya per student on bursary, the money will cater for a total of 36,000 students across the county. And I want to thank the Budget Committee of the County Assembly for negotiating and ensuring that we have money at the world level. Because in this administration, I'm talking about the bottom-up. 